This is a demonstration on how to test the LED strips that come with a sharp 60 inch uh, Quatron. It's a model number LC 60 LE 820UN. And this applies for a lot of different televisions, but in particular, we're focusing on the sharp. Um, you'll see that it has a little connector here. It is best to find a little plug to go into it, either from the wiring harness on the television and tapping into it. Um, or as I have a separate one right here. I took the uh, leads and I made one black and one kept the other one red. And if you're looking at the LED strip here, it plugs in. The negative is on the left hand side. I think it has a number one on it. And number two is the positive. So you want to make sure you have that correct. Here's a diagram showing the different LED strips. One's a 49 LED strip on top. The other one's 30 LEDs on the bottom. Notice that pin 1 says negative and pin 2 says positive. And the part numbers are on the right so you can tell which one's which. Um, you cannot buy these from Sharp. You're lucky if you can find any used ones. They're very difficult to find since most people end up just throwing the televisions away. You also have to have a lot of voltage in order to pump these things. I have all these 9 volt batteries pulled together. And if I take a measurement on the voltage, uh, we will find I have 130 volts. Now, how did I come up with that? Well, as a rule of thumb, and you can always start with a lower amount of batteries, but this one, for instance, has 50 LEDs on it. So you're going to take the 50, multiply it by 3, that's 150 volts. That's generally what you need to put into it. Now, I have a little bit less because I'd rather underperform sending voltage to it so I don't blow it out um, and you can always add more so if I only did eight batteries it won't even light up but if I do this many batteries which is 14 um, they'll uh, it lights it up so I'm going to just go ahead and take this plug now best to make sure you don't short anything together but I'm just going to plug it in here and you'll see the LED strip comes on great that one's good. We'll do it to this one. That one's good. This guy, good. And then I know this one's bad. And we're going to plug it in and nothing. So I also notice if I plug this in here and it's working fine, I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect the battery here. And I'm just going to pull out uh, two of them and put it right back together. And you'll notice doesn't do anything. Not enough power. They're, these LEDs are in a series and that's very common for most every television I've tried. Um, so I'll just put them right back in and there you go. Lights right up. Alright, so that's that strip. Now it also comes with a couple other strips but they're actually only half on each side. I know I have a bad side here and a good one. So it's got uh, 30 LEDs on that, so we definitely do not want to overcharge it. So we're going to pull this guy off. Let's pull it apart here first. Normally I would have a piece of tape over this so we don't short anything out. And these are just alligator clips. You definitely need to have 9 volt connectors, just ones you buy, and just use one side so you get to it. I mean, you could put alligator clips on those, but it just makes it a little bit easier. So with 30 of them, um, we're going to probably go with about, uh, I'd say, maybe uh, eight of these to begin with. So let's just pull this out. And what do we have here? That would be ten. So we'll just do eight. And that's 72 volts, 30 of them. So it's still a little bit, it's below what we really need. But as I said, it can't hurt to do anything too low. So we'll plug this in. And it's barely lighting up, but it's trying. So let's just pull us apart. And we'll just put two more in. And there you go. That was really bright. As you can see. So um, I don't want to do that too long. But you can see how much of a difference it makes just having the correct voltage. So This should give you a much better idea on how to test your LED strips without blowing them out. I'm going to attach... A little bit of a bonus 
whenever I receive things that are of any value off of eBay, I make sure that I open it up with a camera. Now I'm going to leave the beginning part off a little bit just because of the addresses because I do show that to make sure the person knows I'm opening up their package. But I want you to also notice in this, and this is not mandatory, you can just skip over this section, but one of the LED strips kind of lights up a little bit. Another one is totally dead and the other ones are fine. So far in my experience it seems the short ones are the ones that go out. This is probably some power issue with Sharp that they're not denying. I've had this issue with them before in a projector that was blowing out bulbs. I vowed never to buy a Sharp again, but after about seven years or so, I finally gave in thinking they improved and they didn't. So you'll see the attached opening and testing just to give you another perspective, but it's basically the same thing. So nothing important to really see at this particular juncture. Also, as a side note, I do not have any of these for sale, but I may in the future. So I will put down in the description if there is anything for sale. Otherwise, please don't contact me to purchase any of these. I will not have any. That should be the LEDs and the wiring harness that goes with it. There we are. LEDs and wiring harness. So we're going to go ahead and test this. Um, on these, you have ones that have 50 LEDs, actually 49, but close enough. And then you have ones that have 30 on them. So I'm going to go ahead, um, what you need to do is make sure you have batteries, and these are 9 volts, all put in series. And in this case, because you have 30 of them, you want about 3 volts per LED. So that's 90 volts. So right here with um, 10 of these hooked up, we have about 90 volts. Uh, that's just a good rule of thumb. You can always go a little bit less. So I'm going to plug this in and see. Yep, that one lights up just fine. And this side does not light up. So there's a bad, bad one right there. Set that to the side. And we're going to go ahead and get the other one that has 30 on each. Plug it in. That one is barely lighting up. That's not a good sign. That's interesting. I don't know why it was barely lighting up, but it is. So that side seems defective too. Let's try this one. That one's fine. Okay, so we've got two bad strips. And now we're going to go ahead and do the ones that have 50 on them. And in order to test those, we need to put more voltage in here. So we're going to pull this apart and add this. So now I need to have uh, 14 of these all hooked in together. And that way we get a lot more voltage because, as I said, there are about 50 LEDs on these. So. Um, Go ahead and put this connector in. That one works. That one works. That guy works. And last one. Alright, so we've got, uh, all the long ones work fine, so I'm going to go back to this one that partially lit up, and let's just see, we're just going to overdrive it because it already appears to be bad, so, yeah, even with all that extra voltage, not doing it. So definitely a bad strip for this part. So I'm just going to mark it. Uh, nice thing is, though, these, this guy's bent, unfortunately, huh? A uh, nice thing about these, though, is they can unscrew from the frame, and these are identical. So, um, at least I have two good ones, even though I have two bad ones. But that's enough to fix a television, usually. All right. Hope that helps. I will have another video on the actual repair of the television. 
That will probably happen in two weeks, so look for that down in the comments section. I do want to note that there is a person who put out a video on the repair of this, and it was helpful because he did show the batteries. Um, he also uses some probes to light up the bar. I highly recommend you don't do this. He says that the ground is runs all the way down, but it truly does not run all the way down. It goes through some elaborate connection status, um, and it's easy to burn out the LEDs if you start touching the sides of them with the incorrect voltage. I found out this the hard way, and it's something you really don't want to do. So just make sure you get a connector that plugs in the front of it. Don't start using probes and starting unless you really know what you're doing. But don't apply voltage, and if you do, make it really low, because if you apply like uh, 18 volts on the first LED, you'll pop it. If you do it on the third one, you'll probably pop those. It's, again, a formula, basically, of three times the number of LEDs to get them to light up. But if you touch, like, the sixth one with 18 volts, they'll light up, but number seven and beyond won't. So there definitely is a correlation, and it's not a straight ground. So do keep that in mind, and I hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure you like it, uh, just so other people, it comes up in the search, because this was a video to help people, and that was my goal more than anything. As a quick note, when these were shipped to me, the seller listed all the part numbers on the left-hand side, serial numbers that were attached to the LED strips with some extra labels, and the number of LEDs. Very classy and just gives you some extra information to pass along and think about.